Good evening, church family. Glad you are here as we continue to walk through our Names of God series on Wednesday evening recharge. Um, We've walked through uh, a number of names. We're entering the the very end of uh, of the semester in this study. I just want you to think through as we've thought of of each name of Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh Yireh, the Lord will provide. On the mountain, the Lord will provide. Yahweh Tsaba, the Lord is our warrior. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. Yahweh Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. All of these attributes describe God revealing who he is, that in the crisis, in the times of life, this is our God, the one who created it all, reigns above it all. This is our God, this compound name of God, his revelation, his disclosure of who he is to us. This is going to be the last compound name that we take, and then next week we will uh, begin to look at Emmanuel and Jesus, the the God who has come. Uh, So tonight we're going to look at uh, Yahweh Rapha. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord is my healer. The, The Lord is the one who heals. Now, as I give that name to you, uh, I am certain that your brain is probably like mine, and that if you had to build the context of where you would find this compound name, Yahweh Rapha, the Lord is the one who heals, you would probably think that it would would be in a story like, let's say, 2 Kings, when Naaman has leprosy, and Elijah, he, he goes to Elijah, and Elijah makes him go dip in the water, and he comes out, and he's been healed. Right? Or, or when Elijah raises someone from the dead, and then wouldn't that be the perfect time to at that moment, the Lord is my healer. The Lord is the one who makes all of my disease, all of that calamity go away. And in fact, most commonly, even with particular faith healers, that's how they use this name. But I want to ground us. This scripture passage is actually in the complete opposite context, and it's in Exodus chapter 15, okay? Exodus chapter 15. Now, just by the book that we're in, in Exodus, you should be thinking, I bet the Exodus out of Egypt just occurred. So in Exodus chapter 14 is when Israel leaves Egypt, okay? Um. They are going to leave Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea, right? And then they are going to be three days without water. They are in the wilderness, okay? Three days without water. And what we were going to see here is this is a test from the Lord. Now, like any good teacher, You never get a test unless you've had the appropriate material ahead of time so that you should pass the test, right? So let's remember back to the 10 plagues of Egypt, okay? The Israelites, they saw all of that, okay? They saw the the Nile turn to blood. They saw plague after plague. They saw the death angel pass over. Then then as they left Egypt, they saw as Pharaoh's army was approaching and they are hemmed in by the sea, they they saw uh, the Lord put a wall fire between uh, the Egyptian army and the Israelites. And then they saw Moses with part the sea and they walked through on dry land. And then they turned and they saw that the Egyptians were allowed to chase them. And then the sea swallowed them up and they sang a song rejoicing. All of that has led up to this point, but now God wants to test his people to see if there's real faith in there. If they genuinely are starting to grow and to trust him, okay? 
But they go three days without water, and just think how you would be on a wilderness journey, walking for three days without water. You might get a little cranky. And in the distance, they see some water. And you know what they think? Finally, some water. So they go up to the water, and what do they find? The water is bitter. It is undrinkable. It's so bitter, okay? It, 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 is, it is polluted with so much additional toxins and minerals that it's not even drinkable. Well, at this point, Israel has had all it can stand. And the grumbling and complaining reaches elevated levels. And Moses cries out to the Lord, and God tells him, take this tree bush and throw it in the water, and the water became sweet. Okay? Now, that's the context, because now listen, then the Lord discloses his name. So they, the water becomes sweet. They all get a drink, okay? Okay? Then he says this to them. Listen to verse 26. It should be on the screen. And he said to them, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. For this is my name. I am Yahweh Rapha, the one who heals. Now, it is not instinctly intuitive what is going on here and how this means healing. Okay? So let me unpack it for you. There is water that is in front of them that is polluted. It is undrinkable. He says to them, the pollution and the contaminants that I have rained down on Egypt, I will not do this to you because you are my covenant following and my people. For I am the Lord, your healer. And he says this after taking them through a testing period. Okay? So I want you to think of that water. That water is the metaphor. And that metaphor is very similar to the metaphor that Peter picks up in 1 Peter chapter 1. In 1 Peter chapter 1, your and my faith is likened to pure gold. But there, in the midst of that faith, that gold needs to be refined by fire because there are pollutants, there are toxics, uh, toxins in that gold, and it needs to be tested by fire. When you heat gold up, the pollutants rise to the top and are scraped off. That is how you get to the pure gold. And so in 1 Peter, he says, listen, God cares deeply about your faith, and therefore he tests your faith by fire so that the junk comes out out of you so that it can be dealt with, so that it can be removed off because your faith is more precious than gold. Your faith, in fact, in the end will be a presentation when the Lord comes. When the Lord comes, the only thing that you will have left is your faith. Your faith will be a picture, an exaltation of who Christ has been in your life. And God cares deeply about 
your faith, about transforming your character and making you look more and more like Jesus Christ. So let's put this back together with the name of God because here is what God has actually promised to Israel and to us. That is, Egypt received the trials and the uh, difficulty of the plagues, and in their life, it was the wrath of God. They did not know God. They were not gods, and the circumstances of life overwhelmed them, caused them to become bitter, and they did not turn to God. Instead, they were receiving discipline and wrath from God. But God looks at his people and he says, listen, that's not who I am to you. You are mine. You are my covenant people. I am your healer. In other words, when the trials and testing of our life come, we have certainty that the purpose of those trials and tests are for the purpose of bubbling up the dross in our life and scraping it off so that the real genuine faith that is there will be proved that God is in a refining process for us. Therefore, it gives us the ability to look at every instance that occurs in our life and to know that God turns it for good. Why? Because he is my healer. uh, uh, Yahweh Rapha. God is my healer. God is transforming me into the image of his son because I am his. I do not receive his uh, discipline of wrath. Instead, rather, I receive as a father to a child his instruction of discipline that leads me to life. In other words, Uh, When the scripture says Yahweh Rapha, it means that now in Jesus Christ, you have a God who is a therapist for you, a God who knows the inside of your heart, areas of you that you don't even realize yourself. And everything that occurs in your life, God will use it for good and he will expose areas that need to be dealt with. Why? Because he is Yahweh Rapha. He is is the Lord, your healer. I met with a friend this morning for breakfast. And for the last two years, he's been going through some some of the darkest, most difficult journey of his entire spiritual life. And I asked him how things were going. You know what he told me? He actually said, really good that the Lord had been giving him peace, that the Lord had been repositioning his identity upon him, that the Lord had been weeding out a lot of things. And these last two years have been incredibly difficult for him in circumstances that have happened. And and then he told me, he said, "I, I didn't realize it, but through this process, the Lord started to reveal um, some deep wounds that I had when, when a friend died uh, 15 years ago, or when my parents were going through a difficult time of divorce, that I had things that were buried deep down there that I hadn't thought about in forever. I had stuffed those, and, and it wasn't until this moment that the Lord took me through trials, and then he began to pull up things from the past and said, I need to deal with that. I need to deal with that. But ultimately, he I asked him, how are you doing? He said, man, I have, I have more peace. I have more contentment than I have ever had. And, and I told him I was going to be preaching about this name tonight. I'm like, that is perfect. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord is my healer. He, he knows all of you, all of you, to the depth of you. He, he knows all of your wounds from the past, Okay. He, he knows how you've stuffed things and how you've responded to this situation. He, he knows your, your physical hurts, your emotional, your, he knows it all. He is your healer. That is the kind of God he is. Yahweh Rapha, the one that you can trust to be 
tender and delicate with your soul, but also like a surgeon knows how to get in there and get at the root of things. When he says, it's time to deal with that, it's time to deal with that. And that you can trust him because he's given his Holy Spirit. Yahweh Rapha. Will you pray with me? Our heavenly father, Yahweh Rapha, we trust you. There is no God like you. There's no God who can heal like you. You promised the ultimate healing. We know, we know the end, the end of the story. And the end of the story, we get fixed. We see you face to face. We get a new body. We, we, we are able to deal with all of it. But in the interim, you are still a God who works through the circumstances of life. And we trust you in that, that you can deal with our hearts, that you are the healer. We love you. We trust you. There is such a time as this in our culture that is desperate to hear that truth, that, that Yahweh Rapha. There's no God like you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.